Superworms, or Morio worms, are the larvae of the Sophobus morio beetle. These insects are commonly used as feeders for reptiles, fish, birds, and amphibians. In this video, we are going to cover their life cycle, creating pupa, recommendations for enclosure and breeding, bedding, food, and care. Morio worms are laid as tiny, sticky white eggs. Sexually mature female beetles will attempt to bury eggs or lay them on or under objects within their enclosure, such as hides, cardboard, or even food. Eggs take one to two weeks to hatch. It may take a few weeks to notice the larvae in the substrate. They are very small. The worms will grow for three to five months. Once the worms near two inches in length, they are ready to pupate. A few weeks after pupation, a beetle will emerge. At first, they will be light in color. Over the next few hours, they will turn from a pale brown, yellow, white to an orange. Over the next few days, they will become darker and darker, turning red, velvet, and then black. It is sexually mature and ready to begin reproducing, which starts the cycle anew. In order to force the Morio worms to pupate, we need to get them into isolation and into a dark place. Choose the largest Morio worms you have, recommended to be at least one and a half to two inches in length and fat. You want to provide the Morio worms something nutritious before attempting to get them to pupate. I typically use a chunk of banana a few days before so they have plenty of moisture. I place them into small glass jars so I can see them without disturbing them. It may take a week for the worm to curl up into a sea and then another week for it to begin to pupate. Two to three weeks after pupation, a beetle will emerge. Place the beetle with its brethren and make sure it has access to moisture. You can use a number of different enclosures to breed these little critters. I personally use an 11 by 11 by 5 storage bin that I cut the bottom out of and replaced with a screen. I then place that bin into another bin to help with egg collection. It makes a two-tier bin that has enough space in the bottom for bedding and air circulation. I placed some paper towel rolls that I cut in half for hides. I drilled holes in the lid and two near the top of all sides and the bottom bin, allowing for the bins to further be stacked and retain enough airflow to not suffocate the beetles or worms. Breeding them is the simplest part. Your beetles need to have been beetles for about two weeks. You just need males and females. I suggest having more females than males to increase your egg production. I find it difficult to sex them. However, this image may help. Links in the description on the info I found about it. Female beetles will lay eggs in a variety of places. You can exploit this by stacking cardboard together and taping it in the middle. I found out about this from a channel, Tongues TV. Link to his channel and the video in the description. It was a very helpful trick and I am eager to give it a try. In his video, the female beetles were laying the eggs in the little holes in the cardboard and between each layer. He used it for very, very, very easy egg collection and I was quite amazed. However, your female beetles may lay eggs under food, under hides, or dig to the bottom and lay them there. So be careful when removing things from their enclosure as they may have eggs on them. I use old-fashioned oats that I pick up from the grocery store. I do not leave them as large flakes. I grind them up using a magic bullet into smaller pieces. It makes sorting your worms out so much easier. It does not seem to have a negative impact on the larva. As of right now, I do not have any Morio worms to show you, but I can show you sorting mealworms. I bought the sifter on Amazon. It has three mesh sizes and allows me to easily sort and harvest my worms. The worms will eat the substrate they are placed in, but you also need to provide them with moisture. If you are not careful, you can grow mold in your bins and that is not good. If you do, remove the pieces and the surrounding substrate. I normally use potato slices and baby carrots for additional food and moisture. My worms and beetles typically consume the entire piece. I try to scatter it within the bin so as many worms and beetles have access to it as possible. The only time I use something that is wet, like a banana or most fruit, is when I have them isolated and are being gut loaded. I found those types of food tend to grow mold so I avoid using them unless I know they will eat it all that day or if I am gut loading them with no substrate. About once a month I change the bedding out of the bottom bins and place it into a rearing bin and let the worms grow. I hope this helps some of you guys. I've tried to compile everything I've learned this year into a video that is short, digestible, while giving you everything you need to know to breed these fascinating little critters. It is very easy to replace your pet's food source by growing them yourself. You can find these critters in most pet and feed stores. Many online retailers sell them as well if there are none near you. If you have a setup like this, how is it faring for you? What kind of setup do you use for your Moria worms and beetles? 
I am curious to what you think. Do you think I missed anything? Leave a comment below and consider subscribing. From the Gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.